must pray. You must pray. There are times you need to settle down. Pray. Carry your vision. What God has given you. Place it on the ground and pray. Lord, you told me my assignment is to raise my five children. They will not fail. Father, you sent me as, as an apostle, as a prophet, as an evangelist for your glory as i travel from nation to nation lord i pray in the name of jesus let the two lift gates of the cities be open for the gospel let there be healings lord you have made me a worshiper listen hold on one minute let me talk to you my dear worship people pray oh don't just have good voices for songs you see let me tell you why many 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 people who sing don't bless people they don't pray they only train their voice voice training without a track record of solid prayer the deficiency will show on stage no matter how you twist your voice you are leading praise and worship you don't just rehearse and clear your voice and take lemon and honey and come and sing you are dealing with spirits you are dealing with destinies take out time and pray from that place of prayer the difference will be very clear that you are carrying something on your head Please, my dear people, pray. Worship team, pray. God is raising you. It's not only your songs. It is prayer that puts something on that song. More than melodies. And you stand to lead worship. And as you just raise one song, the glory that emanates from your prayer altar through your voice just sweeps across the place and you are seeing sick bodies getting healed you are not even aware just one song and they say what kind of a worshiper are you it's beyond songs beyond songs it is in the place of prayer you will receive many songs there are songs you don't have the brain to compose they will come by the spirit sometimes you will fall asleep while praying and then you will hear the angels are singing Hosanna in the highest the angels are singing you will not hear any angel with spiritual unseriousness no prayer and fasting please pray I will not give you rules but let me challenge you if you are a serious Christian this is my personal opinion at least there should be a day once a week for you to fast if that is too much then forget about revival believe me this is not a doctrine I'm giving you there's no place like that in scripture but I'm telling you any as if you are called into ministry let me challenge you and, and and admonish you by the message of god except you want to make mockery of yourself and make mockery of the name of the lord through your life there is a level of stamina you have to trust god for grace to tame food it is good to eat i'm not one of these people that advocate people have died through carelessness and died the death of fools that's not what i'm teaching you You want to lay hands on the sick and see miracles? You want to speak the word of God and let it come with power? Man of God, pray. There are some of us who are young, we are just starting and already we are careless. One month, no prayer, no fasting. And I hope you know that fasting is not just a time where you abstain from food and sleep. You are not fasting. Albeit that is important for your health, but that is not fasting. When there is no prayer, what study and worship you did not fast let me repeat when there is no prayer what study and worship you did not fast no matter even if you do 48 hours 72 hours that was spent sleeping if there is no prayer what study and worship you did not fast so just because you slept by nine and woke up by four and slept back again and woke up quarter to five 
and already started arranging your food, waiting for six on the dot. Of course, God will honor you, He's merciful, but I am telling you, that's not fasting. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Please give us verse 14, Luke 4:14. 4, Let's hurry up. Luke 4:14. 4, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. In verse 1, he was driven by the Spirit, full of the Spirit, but the Bible does not mention power. Verse 14, having prayed and fasted, even though with the Spirit. He returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And the Bible says there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. I believe in the ministry of fasting and prayer. Please submit yourself. Fasting is not for men of God. Fasting is not for those in trouble. Fasting is not for those that the doctors say they have diabetes or they have, you know, something that is wrong with them medically. Fasting is for all men. I truly believe that. Prayer with fasting. Prayer with fasting. Prayer with fasting. Hallelujah. If you are pregnant and you have children, don't worry, we'll fast for you. Our fasting will cover you. And even children too can fast. Let me tell you, don't over pamper your children until spirits enter them. Children can fast. You can, they can fast and end by 12. It does not kill them. Don't say my child is too small. Let him grow. By the time he grows, he already has. Do you think that it was a legion that entered the madman in Gadara in one day? They kept coming and calling themselves and said, This man is an available tool until they became a legion. Encounter with the spirit of power. Number two, the second platform. I hope you got my arrangement. That I'm giving you three biblical platforms for accessing power with God. Number one is through encounters. Encounter with the spirit of power. And that there are two conditions. You want to encounter the spirit of God with his power. Your heart condition. And then the ministry of prayer and fasting. Number two. The second platform for accessing power is... Power that is accessed through the understanding of scripture. There is a dimension of power that is accessed through the understanding of scripture. You can also put in bracket comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. The second level of spiritual power is accessed through understanding of scripture, understanding the mysteries of the kingdom. The principles of the kingdom have within them a measure and a dimension of God's power already pre-programmed. Please listen. You can access a dimension of spiritual power based on light, illumination that comes from scripture. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, and now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance it takes power for you to walk in that inheritance and that because you have embraced the word of god it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified second peter chapter 3 and verse 18 second peter 3 18 it says but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Grow in grace and in the knowledge. The original rendition there is not just grow in grace and in the knowledge. It is grow in grace through the knowledge. Grow in grace and your growth in grace comes through knowledge. The higher your level of light, 
the higher the spiritual power that you command are we together now yes there are things you need to know about the kingdom the way the kingdom was built advancement and power is light dependent to the degree to which you access the scriptures that means if someone comes and is saying listen there is darkness in this and that area of my life i need help you must have the level of spiritual understanding to be able to guide them to access the power of God that comes through knowledge. Fight ignorance. Fight ignorance. Fight ignorance, believers. Obtain grace to study and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation. You must obtain grace to have high level spiritual illumination. This is the reason why coming to the house of God is very important because the house of God affords you very cheaply the privilege of being methodically mentored, guided in partnership with the Holy Spirit. When he, the spirit of truth is come, before the Holy Spirit came as the spirit of power in Acts chapter 2, Jesus told us that he will come and guide us. You're not going to walk in spiritual power in ignorance. It will be a risk for you to be a powerful but ignorant believer. Power comes with light, light. Power comes with illumination. And Jesus himself, the powerful, knew what he would do. Is God speaking to someone? Power. For instance, there are certain possibilities in the kingdom that if you just have wisdom that comes through the word, you will know what to do. Let me show you a scripture. I found this scripture and it really blessed me. Proverbs 3.35 while I was preparing this note, I just stumbled across this scripture and it ministered so deeply to me and I added it among the scriptures. It says, the wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. The wise, you will always see the glory of God around the life and the corridors of wisdom. The wisdom that comes through the word. It's impossible for your life to not capture and manifest the glory of God if you submit to the wisdom of the word. Financial glory, glory in terms of influence, whatever it is. The power of God revealed through your life by reason of accessing wisdom. For instance, if doors have been closed against you and you are trusting God for open doors, it's not just the issue of demons and casting out demons. Maybe you do not have the wisdom to understand the gift and the ministry of men. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, send somebody to my life to help me. And God says that dimension of power is released through understanding. The favor of God can come and wait at the corridor of your destiny for many years. But because you have not gone to understand the dynamics, honor, value, see, your destiny helper can come sent by God to beautify and glorify your life. But you use your mouth, you use carelessness, you use dishonor and lack of discernment to recycle seasons of pain. You can pray and fast, but because you do not understand the principles of scripture. Hallelujah. This is very important. You must learn the ways of God. There are many of you who don't read books. You don't study any material. You don't learn. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. It takes hunger and diligence. Please go online and listen to my message, buy the truth. I preached it in Takoradi in Ghana. Buy the truth. It's a very, I listed there in that teaching five currencies that we use to buy the truth. Hunger, meekness, honor. These are currencies that we use to buy the truth. You must passionately learn. Learn the things that you do not know. Knowledge is available. Knowledge is more available today than it was any time in history. It takes humility and a recognition that if I do not know and I remain in darkness, anything you want to learn today, it is available. You want to make yourself more valuable, even physically, it is available. Your destiny helper comes to your house 
and you don't know how to cook and you say God will favor me you did not bless the person are you not in trouble can't you go and meet somebody to learn how to cook as a way of preparing to honor your destiny helper a man old enough to be your father comes to your house and after two hours you give him a cup of cold water and he says God forbid hallelujah you do not understand the principles of relationship and courtesy to greet those little little things can rob you of the power of God you may not see the power that is invested through knowledge believers please hear me you must understand the word dimension of the power of God go for the word I immerse myself in knowledge the knowledge of scripture and then wisdom from men and women with proven track records it's not only God I want to know I want to know the men I am sent to I want to understand how men think I want to understand the principles of influence I want to understand leadership I want to understand how to impact people it's not an impartation it comes by knowledge go and buy books go online settle down give yourself revelation projects and settle down and learn if you're with me say amen. amen please obtain grace to learn obtain grace to learn don't be lazy reject laziness it is of the devil it is a robber and a destroyer of beauty and color from a destiny a lazy generation that just believes in impartation alone will only be making a mockery of themselves let me tell you sincerely it is often said on easy lies the head that wears the crown if you are a man of God the only thing you learn is not it's not only prayer and fasting and Bible study you learn you must learn administration you must learn finances you must learn leadership you must learn people skills are we together there are all kinds of veterans of leadership within this ministry go and subscribe for their programs and learn and build capacity sometimes we suffer the pain of a generation that does not want diligence but we want results oh god it doesn't matter how you do let me just see the results i know you are merciful the mercy of god is not a license for foolishness let me tell you the truth a diligent hand shall be made fat there are many lazy preachers i'm sorry to say there are many lazy business people you want to have influence over people it is not only anointing you will need an empty and a dull head nobody will come and submit to any leadership that does not have capacity people are intelligent people don't forget that some of the people you will find around you are also leaders in their corporations conglomerates they have children some of them are employers of people to the thousands they will not come and sit down under a leader that does not know what he's saying there has to be a high level of advanced developed intelligence your mind must be alive not your spirit alone and it takes diligence receive grace to be diligent shout a loud amen receive grace to be diligent avoid premature manifestation if you are not ready sit down when you are ready the door will open if the door is closed is God's mercy keeping you so that you don't rubbish the opportunity he's giving you sit down sit down and learn make up your mind that when God brings you to your season of appearance you will not bring shame and reproach to yourself and to the name of Christ hallelujah the understanding of scripture empowers men to release that dimension of God's power the Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty to penury that means if you are a greedy person who is always withholding forget about increase whether it is in the secular or in the kingdom you see giving is one of the major active ingredients as far as kingdom wealth and prosperity is concerned God will not trust you I hope you know that wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement no maybe in the world it will be but in the kingdom wealth is a trust from God a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from above and there are conditions that must be met 
God loves everybody, but according to Matthew chapter 25, I think from verse 16 or so, the parable of the talents, the Bible tells us very clearly that he gave unto one five talents, he gave unto one one talent, uh, two talents, he gave unto one one talent, according to their several abilities, not according to his love for them. He loved all of them, but he gave them according to their capacities. And at the end of the story, we see that he was just and fair to have done that. In the kingdom, God will not cast his spell before swine. You want God to commit to you the grace for nations and territories. It has to rise and match your level of spiritual and intellectual acumen. Number three. What is the third platform for accessing the power of God? One, we said encounters, particularly encounter with the spirit of power. Number two, power that is released through knowledge understanding of scripture and the mysteries of the kingdom number three power that is accessed through covenant alignment with anointed vessels the third dimension of power don't assume you understand what I'm saying is power that is accessed by coming into covenant alignment with careers of spiritual power careers of the anointing in Philippians 1 and verse 7, popular scripture, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7, the last sentence there says, Ye all are partakers of my grace. Paul did not say, Ye all are partakers of the grace or his grace. He knows that it all belongs to him, but with respect to what he was teaching, he said, It is grace given to me, but you can be partakers of it. Ye all are partakers of my grace. There is power that is accessed through genuine connection, covenant alignment with men and women that have been so trusted by this grace from God. It is true. There are dimensions in the spirit that God will mandate that you receive and function in by reason of your connection with certain men and women that have become careers of grace. In as much as the same Lord is rich unto all, and ultimately the Spirit of God is the giver of all, but God has so distributed this, or he has so designed this system in his kingdom, there are levels of spiritual power you can never access in isolation. To certain graces that God has put within your life within a territory and largely speaking within the body of Christ grace every time I have the privilege of going to minister in a nation or in a church especially if I'm preaching for any of the fathers I don't just prepare the sermon among the many things I prepare I also prepare my heart and I try to study by the Spirit and through experience and through Scripture the various graces that are at work in the life of those individuals so that on one hand as I go to bless them by the privilege God has given me on another hand my heart is open to receive what grace do they carry what standing do they have with God let me submit to you my dear people please listen to me there are men who have a standing with God there are men who God has covenanted and sworn by his name over their lives. They have a standing with God. There are men who have become the friend of God. Truly, there are men on earth who are friends of God. They are not just children of God. That is wonderful. But by reason of relationship and intimacy, they have come to a point where God can call them friends. Shall I hide? these from my friend Abraham seeing that he shall be a mighty man one of the proof of friendship is that you are not afraid of opening anything including secrets when someone is your friend you can open even things that are not privy to everybody and say this is it you are my friend hallelujah there are deep things that even though everything is with respect to scripture 
you have to get to a stage and a level with God where God will show you certain things that make for national impact, territorial impact across regions and continents. You can be a friend of God. And that comes through living a life that desires to please Him completely. You can be the friend of God. There are people who have a stand with God. That means you can tap into their work with God and experience certain possibilities that your personal spiritual level has not yet gotten you to the level that you should have. I, I, do you understand what I just said? That means based on your personal spiritual level, some of these results and possibilities should not be happening in your life, but you can tap into their grace, their covenant, and their work with God. And you will find yourself manifesting possibilities that are far higher than your personal level of spiritual growth, even before you enter it. It's true. It's true. I have seen people carry graces. I have seen people manifest possibilities that when you vet them scripturally, their level of intelligence and spiritual acumen has not gotten them to the point where they should be commanding that level of result, but they have been able to align through understanding, humility, meekness, genuine covenant connection. I'll give you an instance. Elisha, there is no record of Elisha being personally and meticulously trained by Elijah. We know that the sons of the prophet were the ones who were being trained by Elijah. Elisha poured water in the hands of Elijah. That means when he was going for his lecture, he would serve him and wait and allow him teach the sons of the prophet. So based on his level of renewal, based on his level of, um, uh, what do we call it now? Maybe his, his, his level of spiritual transition. He could not have even received that anointing not to talk about a double portion. I'm sure that's why the sons of the prophet were very casual. Because they knew that this guy was only wasting his time. But he stood there with hunger. And he says, all right, you desire this. You have used honor. You have used submission. You have used genuine connection. If you can see me as I'm taking. And that mantle came upon him. And the sons of the prophet testified. They said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. Another example, when Jesus sent the disciples two by two and sent them seven by seven, I hope you know the Holy Ghost had not come upon them yet. They were not saved. None of them was born again because Jesus had not been glorified. There was nowhere they would have been saved because Jesus had to die and to resurrect by the glory of the Father for anyone to be saved. So they just went with his word under his covering and as they went to preach, the Bible says they returned rejoicing. They marveled because they didn't feel anything. There was nothing around their life that should produce that result. They said, even the demons were subject to us by thy name. And he said, do not rejoice because of the issue of demons. Rejoice rather that your names will be written in, the, in, in, in heaven. That should be the basis of your joy. It is possible to come under a ministry like this. And while you are still learning the principles of prosperity, while you are still learning the principles of dominion, you can genuinely come under this grace and start seeing certain results happen in your life even before you get to that realm. There are people who have entered that realm already. You will see that if you ask them and say, defend these workings of the Spirit, they will tell you sincerely, I am still growing. However, because of their covenant connection with understanding. You have heard me tell you, my precious people, fans, there is no inheritance for fans. I am a fan of this. I, mm -mm. There is no inheritance for well-wishers. It is people who connect with understanding. Hallelujah. You look, for instance, at... A ministry respectfully speaking like redeemed our father in the Lord Baba Deboe and you see the spread of redeemed globally let me submit to you you will be joking to believe that that spread 
is just an independent reflection of every of the branch or every of the pastor's personal work with God. It will be a joke. There are certain things you see that is a product of a corporate grace moving people together. Are we together? You can step into certain graces and begin to prosper even while you are learning. People will see you and they will mistake in you. They will even say, listen, come and teach us about wealth and prosperity. And you say, listen, I will only embarrass myself. I'm still learning. It's just the grace of God that is at work in me. Some of these graces are activated through the power of prophetic speakings. Like when they speak over you like you are about to receive this night. You see, as you receive it with understanding, the realm of the spirit responds to the fact that you received it. Listen, when he said by this time tomorrow, he did not have to wait for everybody in Samaria one by one to believe. People just sat down and by the next day they were eating well under the corporate grace of a prophet. Hallelujah. One of those profound revelations is our salvation. Imagine if everybody had to die on the cross. Jesus said, all right, I've done it for you. You saw exactly how I did it. Everybody get a carpenter, be on your way to any mountain around your area and die. There would probably be less than 100 people who will be saved by now. Because nobody will want to die. Yet he did the dying. And then he got up as a conqueror and came to you. You do not qualify. It should never be for you. You are saved by grace. And that works even not of yours. It is of God. And no one, there's no boasting there. And he gave you his life. And you simply received it by faith. And it was credited to you in the realm of the spirit that when he died, you died too. It's not just that he died and you received his life. It's that both of you too died. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not just that he died and gave me life. I also died with him. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond evil. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. I'm the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Please hear me. Do you know? The advantage of being planted in the house of God where the power and the grace of God is at work it is a system of advantage provided for you so that while you grow God knows that it takes time to grow let me tell you the truth it takes time to be born again it takes time to learn it takes time to be filled with the Holy Spirit it takes time to begin to learn the ways of God while that is happening if the realm of the spirit and if God depended on your personal spiritual life, you may die before you come to know your rights in Christ and walk in authority. So in the interim, he places systems of advantage. One of it is the power of prophetic covering that you can come under the covering and the grace. The blood that was put on the lintel, they didn't put the blood on everybody's head. Even if you were somebody in unbelief, once you were in a house where there was blood upon the lintel, the angel of death will pass. It was not about everybody's, the, the personal fate of the individual. As for me and my house, there are times that your grace can cover the house. There are many of you, I submit to you, there are many blessings you have received today that may not necessarily be a reflection of your prayer life, your spiritual life, but certain intercessions have happened for you and you come into that inheritance because you see, when the realm of the spirit is distributing the advantage, it distributes to everyone who is part of that fold. This is true. 
Remember the example I gave you some time ago that when you stand to take a shower, do you have to lift your leg to touch the shower? The leg does not have to be worried. All you need to do is just stand in front of the shower. For a while it will look like it's only the head that is enjoying the water. But every part of that body will receive sufficient water as far as your bathing is concerned. That's how it is. It may start from the head. If the leg decides to go and wait at the door, then that leg will not experience that process of bathing. It is dangerous, especially in this end time, to alienate yourself from the grace and that, that corporate covering is a risk. And I hope you know that proximity is not the same as connection. No, you can be close to an anointing, you can be in, within a house like this, and yet not have anything happen to you. Look at Elisha, he was very wise. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? As one who had already carried the double portion, he recognized God and he recognized Elijah, and the Red Sea parted, the Jordan parted. Hallelujah. You are reaping where you bestowed no labor. Others have labored, but with understanding, you can step into the harvest. Please hear me. This is why, you see, if you are genuinely part of this ministry, my heart bleeds if there are certain graces that you don't carry in your life. The, believe me, this is not pride. There are some graces and some dimensions of God's power that should never be a struggle for your spiritual life. While you grow to step into that realm in experience, there is already a portal that has been opened through sacrifice. And if you have the understanding, you can step on it. Do you believe what I'm saying? You're part of this vision and men do not arise to help you. You don't experience the favor of God. The presence of God is a struggle. No, something is wrong. We don't claim to have everything, but there are some things he has given. And for someone, God brought you here to tell you, you and your family members, you are struggling. This is unnecessary. It's unnecessary. You cannot come to an oasis where there's water and then you are struggling and begging and crying for water. It ought not to be so. They came to the one who supplies bread. He multiplied bread and gave everybody. They ate and ate and didn't know what to do. There were five loaves and two fish. I mean, um, uh, 12 baskets left. There are certain graces that should be at work in your life in this house. You see, everybody rejecting you, nobody opening up doors for you. You cry and there's nobody helping you. You are rejecting the investment of the spirit you are also rejecting the possibilities that reside within this place. Is someone learning? We also give that which we have received. Not every grace we see here just came as a result of personal encounters. Out of the abundance of that which we have received from the fathers, that is speaking, it must speak in your life too. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're a man of God connected to this vision. It's not about size or whatever, but you should not be small. He said, I will glorify them, they will not be small. I will multiply them, they will not be few. It's a grace. Have you accessed the hear ye him anointing? Have you accessed the grace for favor? What is it about the house rents that God cannot arise and wipe your tears? Yes, you are learning. But can you not come under that grace? It's more than money. How about the manifestation of the presence of God? How about your prayer life? Apostle, I'm struggling with prayer. I don't know that grace is not there. Then there is something you are not maximizing. There is a grace in abundance that if you can open up your heart and you receive with power and receive with grace, Please hear me. We are in the days of his power where the nations need to see Jesus revealed. 
through the display of the multifaceted dimensions of God's power God is counting on you ladies and gentlemen God is counting on me it, thank God for all the people we keep talking about in history but they have gone they have joined the cloud of witnesses right now God is counting on us and in the name of Jesus we will not fail God in the name of Jesus you will not fail your family in the name of Jesus you will not fail this nation the days of his power where we will start hearing that someone came out of here and while he was on his way going somewhere something just happened to someone and they said the baby is dead and you stand and say in the name of Jesus as a child of God who has been taught I decree and declare that baby come back to life now and the baby jacks back to life and everybody within that territory the parents the families are we together that you go home and there's one church just close to your house and they say dear brother um, can you just come and share and just tell us something about the love of Jesus and you don't sit down and say well I'm not really ministry you know we are not this thing about revelation it's not all of us that have it no. it's an indictment on the spiritual investment upon your person that you enter that church knowing that God does not call the qualified but he qualifies the called you stand being that you have been instant in season and out of season knowing that you are not alone and the Lord walking with them confirming the words with signs and wonders the opening of your mouth becomes deliverance for people and the grace of God sweeps over that assembly soul saved lives healed and changed and transformed there are some of you here there are businesses that will call you and say come and be part of us not by adding any value become like the ark of God in the business in the name of Jesus Christ that people will call you and say listen this is we are a group of business people we have discerned that you carry an unusual grace for favor and we want that grace to be at work in us come and be part of this business what is my role in this business nothing just pray and speak for our welfare that the list becomes as David please let me tell you this before we round up everything that has made you feel you are not up to everything that has made you feel it is not for people like you I want you to reject it tonight in the name of Jesus it is true that is there is room for growth and there are levels in the spirit but can I assure you cast not away your confidence my dear people it has a great recompense of reward therefore I cast every spirit that has kept you to make you feel that you are not capable maybe some of you in ministry I cannot speak well maybe I cannot sing well every spirit that has brought you down demeaning and downplaying the investment of God in your life you are afraid of laying hands on the sick because you are afraid of embarrassment I cast that spirit right now in Jesus name me some of you this spirit may have come as a result of mindsets you have received from people and from situations that have downplayed and demeaned you they make it look like it's not for people like you you are very weak people you are very this and that you don't have to argue with anyone but I want you to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free and do not allow anyone or anything rest in the love of God I may not look like what you want but he loves me and that is the most important thing if God has loved you and has approved you then that is it don't get into this especially this our world today of bending into all kinds of things and become a victim of people's emotion rest in the confidence that you are loved you are chosen hallelujah I believe in Jesus but let me tell you sincerely I believe in myself too ah, I believe in myself in the name of Jesus I'll be lying if I tell you I don't mm -mm. I believe in Jesus 
but this man standing before you I believe in myself my only limit in life is the voice of God and the law of process I don't see limitations in front of me truly this is my mindset if God sends me to any nation as I go to that nation I don't go there wondering what kind of demons are in that place will the people listen no. there is a level of confidence not pride that you need to have to know that you can be trusted God can trust you man of God as we are wrapping up the Lord is speaking to you God believes in you even Satan is afraid of you but you have refused to believe in yourself crying for the approval of men as the basis of your confidence that is a big mistake you are making with your life you need to believe in Jesus and you need to believe in yourself believe in yourself believe that you are loved believe that you are part of the fold of God please hear me believe that God loves you and believe that he has a great plan for you that when God is talking about the mighty army don't exclude yourself don't use any kind of sentiment age background whatever it is physical mundane parameters uh -uh. there is none of us that is ever qualified enough based on the credentials of the flesh to be used by God but since he has drawn us by his mercy we come running with joy and gratitude and confidence he can send us to any nation and we will go he can tell us to take the globe and we will go there is no fear if you are afraid there are many things you will not do in your life you will be whipping up and attracting sympathy from people there are some of you is fear that has stopped you from building that house till today you have the land you have everything to start fear what will people say God must grant someone grace for somebody you should leave this meeting now and by tomorrow if somebody tells you I'm sick tell him in the name of Jesus can I pray for you I have been trained I lay my hands upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God be healed apostle what happens is the person is not healed did you collect money no you get into trouble where you collect that if you if you collect money are we together someone comes and tells you do you know every door is closed how can I reach apostle and you tell him well you may not be able to reach apostle but do you believe that I will stand and agree with you huh. and while you are saying that the spirit of grace is ready for you to speak and you say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead and whew, a miracle happens to that person the next time they see you they say pastor he said no 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 I'm a banker I said that's none of my business it is the dimension of you that minister to me that I will call the Bible said they will call you ministers of our God there are many of you God is about to give you a new name by reason of the mighty things that he's doing in and through your life a new name a new name some of you will sing and worship and sing to the nations and just one song that God gives you will go across the globe blessing and healing and lifting people